Hello, everybody. I'm grateful to be able to chit chat with you guys today. I was feeling all the love and all the energy, you know, flying around. It's very exciting. Um, and it got me in a vibration of how uh, all the times uh, that beings or situations have just solve themselves miraculously uh, in my experience and um, so I would share a story. Um, a couple times in my travels in life, perfect strangers have been nicer to me and more giving to me than people I've known for years. It's funny how that works. I always strive to be that. Uh, loving to all and help if I can if I meant to <sighs> I'm not sure which story to tell there's so many by the way I'm grateful every day to all the beans you guys so grateful to you guys I mean just you know I wake up in the morning with the Nias family song playing in my uh, in my head I always have a radio on in there, and lately, my first thing in the morning song has been that. Uh, so I'd like to thank um, Jeremy for making such a beautiful song uh, for us. It's just really special, and it's on my uh, head music. <laughs> so thank you. So that's just one right now example, but there's so many examples of just people who are just total strangers, seemingly. Uh, just doing such beautiful things and not even knowing uh, how much they touch somebody Okay, uh, when I was younger uh, I traveled a lot and I never had a lot of money um, But back then gas didn't cost near as much And so I could go on a 500 mile trip and have $20 in my pocket This was pretty typical of me uh, well, this one particular time, I'm leaving Mobile, Alabama, and I'm driving uh, to Houston. And I have $20 and two small children. And everything we own is shoved in a little Mitsubishi Gallant. Um, great car, by the way. We were friends, the car and I. Anyways, um, I was getting ready to go through Baton Rouge. Now there's a place uh, where you get off, I think it's 12, and then you kind of go into Baton Rouge, back on to 10. It's been a while since I took the trip. And uh, it just kind of opens up. And it opened up really big, and I, I drove, you know, my dad was a race car driver. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I pull out and I just start passing everybody. And a police officer pulls me over, a state trooper, a young guy. And I was just, oh, I was so annoyed. So I pull over and I was so rude to the cop. And the cop was trying very hard to be nice to me. And I don't know how, you guys, but somehow he gives me a warning ticket. And I say, great, great, thank you. And uh, I get going on the road again now. The traffic is starting to really, really emerge as I'm getting into Baton Rouge. And as no sooner as I got going up to about, back then it would have been 55, uh, 60 miles an hour, um, I had a blowout on my back right tire. And I mean, um, it just disintegrated. The tire just disintegrated. And there's traffic everywhere. And I'm like in the center of maybe like five, four or five lanes, a lot of lanes. So I'm trying to get over and get out, pull it off uh, the interstate with this blown out tire and just shaking my head knowing it was because I was so rude to the cop. And I somehow get over and it was right by a uh, off ramp. So I was right past the off ramp and I pulled over and I just got out and I looked at the tire and of course everything me and the two kids had was in the car so it was just slammed. The trunk was slammed full of clothing and Things like that. <laughs> the spare tire, of course, is completely underneath um, all my stuff. 
And I stood there for a minute, and I thought, all right, fine. And I just kind of, like, breathed, and let's just unpack the truck and change the tire. It's not the first time I've had to change a tire. It's no big deal. So I start getting stuff out. Well, about now, and um, it's daylight, like in afternoon, you know, right around lunchtime. Um, an old pickup truck pulls up behind my car, and this really nice man gets out. And he asked me, uh, do I need some help? And I was just, of course, so grateful and thankful. And, and he was so nice. And his energy was just beautiful. And he unpacked. He, he insisted that he do it. And he unpacked the trunk of my car. And he got my, uh, my little donut tire out. Um, and he put it on. And he insisted that I follow him to a, a used tire store right down the street near where we were and that he would get me a really cheap tire. Like I said, I had $20 going across, you know, 500 miles. And, um, and, and he just was going, oh, and it was his birthday. He told me it was his birthday. And he said he just didn't want me to have any bad feelings about Baton Rouge. And he liked to go around and help people and do things like that on his birthday. I mean, just the kindest, nicest, sweetest man. And he just had an old beat up truck and I just had old beat up Mitsubishi, you know. We were just two beans coming together, you know, in the moment. Well, uh, so he gets my donut tire on, he repacks the trunk of the car. And then we drive, you know, four miles, not even far. Uh, to this tire store and, and he just goes in and he tells me to wait and They didn't have anything that would work for my car and then he felt bad for whatever reason uh, I've certainly wasn't making him feel bad. I was already elated that he got the donut on and helped me pack and unpack and all that I can still picture him I don't recall his name, but names don't matter I would have been like 24 years old when all this happened. Anyways, um, he wanted me to follow him to Pep Boys, where, long story short, he unpacked my trunk again. He got out the spare tire. He took, or the, the original tire, excuse me. He took the original tire into Pep Boys. He had them put on a new tire, a brand new tire on my rim and then he came out and he took off the donut and he put it back in the trunk and he put on a new tire and he repacked my trunk again and I had called uh, my ex-husband where I was actually on my way to see him in Houston and let him know what had happened and he was going to send me a little bit of money to cover whatever but I had to go to like a Western Union but I hadn't gotten there yet okay so I uh, he did all that and of course I'm telling him you know how I'm paying back and how grateful I am and all that and he just kept insisting it was just his birthday you know and then I told him that I was going to get some money and I wanted him to come with me so I could pay him for the tire. So he said he would come with me and he waited with me and the children because I had to wait a little while because Western Union was really slow then. And uh, I got the money after a couple hours and he wouldn't let me give him any of it. And I really, really tried. And then I, I got his um, name, and I remember writing it down in an old checkbook. And he was just so okay. And he just said he was happy to do it. I just don't know what I would have done if it wasn't for such a beautiful encounter. And it seems like it was a quote unquote bad thing that happened. It's one of my more beautiful stories and one of my more beautiful feelings when I think about life. There's a few, but I'll
I'll just leave you with the beautiful man who stayed with me and my children until we were safely on the road again out of Baton Rouge. And I'm sending all my love out to all the beings, all the travelers. I'm with you and I'm grateful. And you got this. So thank you to all you guys in our family. I mean, everyone, as far as I'm concerned, is part of my family, but to have you guys here with me to talk to is just a joy. I try to talk to my my husband and he just glazes over and it's okay that he glazes over, but it's nice. It's nice like this. So thank you so much, everyone. I hope you feel truly how much I love you all. I'll try to do another story soon. Namaste, namaste.